One of the arguments I hear most often regarding the new names for the lines of the London Overground system is that they don't have obvious geographical significance, whereas the older nicknames for them do. But here's an interesting thing. The Mildmay line actually did serve somewhere called Mildmay, and there used to be a station there. The station was Mildmay Park, and it was about here. The line was built by the North London Railway, which is why this line has always been known as the North London Line, officially or unofficially. The North London Railway started life as the East and West India Docks and Birmingham Junction Railway, and was founded with the aim of providing a link between the West Coast Main Line and the London Docklands. It was intended primarily as a freight line, but that all quickly changed. The railway began service in 1850, and at that time, the public transport scene in London was very different. There was no underground, and buses were horse-drawn. The railway provided a very useful connection from the East End to the edges of central London. In 1865, they opened a terminus at Broad Street in the City of London, which was an even better link. The line changed its focus from carrying freight for other railways to running its own commuter trains. In fact, as early as 1853, its name changed to the far simpler North London Railway, reflecting its major selling point. Mildmay Park Station did not exist back then. It opened on the 1st of January 1880. Mildmay Park was developing into a residential area, so of course it was of interest to the North London Railway. Houses mean commuters. The station the North London Railway built was a decent-sized one, with three platforms and a substantial street-level building. It featured Moorish-style architecture, with the station name built into the structure itself. While nothing of this old building remains at street level, you can very clearly see the base of it at track level. The platforms were reached via a covered footbridge. There were canopies at the western ends of the platforms, and a signal box on the central platform. In truth, the history of Mildmay Park is not a very eventful one, for a number of reasons. The most obvious is that it was a basic commuter station in a quiet suburb where not much happened. The station has one rather grisly claim to fame from the 9th of January 1914, when the body of a murdered child was found beneath a seat on the 4.14pm train there. It seems that the murder had happened a couple of hours earlier, and the body had ridden the train up and down the line at least twice, which is absolutely horrible. Who committed the murder remains unknown. The father was accused, but acquitted due to lack of evidence. The North London Railway in general had a great start in life, but the 20th century was not kind to it. The problem, from 1901, was electric trams. They were cheaper, cleaner, and more direct than the frankly rather meandering and indirect route into the city provided by the NLR. The underground also cut into their profits significantly. The company tried to cut costs where they could, which did not help. They also attempted to team up with other London transport providers to fix fares and take advantage of joint marketing, but ultimately it was to no avail. They just didn't really do anything that other forms of transport couldn't do better. In 1909, their management was taken over by the much larger London and North Western Railway, and in 1922, the LNWR took them over completely. Mildmay Park was badly hit by changes in commuting patterns. The line had hoped to snag city workers when the station was opened, but most of the people who lived locally tended to work locally so they didn't really need the train. The LNWR became part of the London Midland and Scottish Railway in 1923, and the LMS had seemingly no interest in this underused railway. There was little investment, and stations were shabby and uninviting. Commuters complained that signage to the stations was poor, almost as if the LMS were embarrassed about the line. It gained the nickname of the Forgotten Railway. By this time, the service at Mildmay Park had been reduced to peak hours only. In 1934, the station was closed completely. The building survived until 1987. In 1983, it was arguably replaced by the nearby Dalston Kingsland. So, this is Mildmay Park on the Mildmay Line. Yet the Mildmay Hospital, which the line is actually named after, is in Shoreditch and not on the Mildmay Line at all. What gives? Well, me, I'm glad you asked. 
The Mildmay Hospital was founded by the Mildmay Mission, which was based at St. Jude's Church in Mildmay Park. St. Jude is the patron saint of lost causes, which must be a very depressing job. The Mildmay Mission was a charitable organisation that provided various services, including education, youth clubs and homeless shelters. In 1877, they opened a makeshift hospital in Shoreditch. This was an area with high poverty, high crime and some frankly abysmal slums. The current hospital was opened in 1892, still in Shoreditch. So, that is how the Mildmay Line came to be named after a hospital that's not on the Mildmay Line, which is named after a place that is on the Mildmay Line, which is no longer served by the Mildmay Line. Are we clear on all that? I'm going to assume your answer is yes. Well, I do hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, please do leave a like and consider subscribing for more. I would like to thank my donors on Ko-fi and Patreon and here on YouTube. You are the name change to my repurposed railway. And I will see you all again very soon. Cheerio.